You might think that the biggest mistake that a homeowner can make when buying a new variable speed system is choosing the wrong brand. However, there's a far bigger mistake that affects homeowners all the time, and that is choosing the wrong contractor. We see it all the time when an install gets botched and the homeowner gets raked over the coals. So how do you avoid something like this happening to you? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this video. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC, and at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button, and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. Just the other day, we had a gentleman call in, and he requested a quote to replace three systems on his house. However, he was wanting it to be the best systems in the market. And for us, being a carrier dealer, we offered Infinity Systems, so in his case, that would be three green speed systems. And a carrier green speed system is one of the best variable speed communicating systems on the market, if not the best. And we did our thing and got a quote put together for him. Since all three of his systems were still running, that gave him plenty of time to get multiple quotes. And then I think he got close to a dozen quotes in all together from different companies. So after getting all his quotes in and looking over all the bids, um, it came down to two companies that he felt comfortable with. And that was us and one other competitor. He asked us if we can match the pricing of the other bid. And the major differences was they were offering a train system and we were offering a carrier system, both variable speed, both great systems. We let him know that we couldn't because we're a transparent company and we put most of our pricing online. And so we always quote our best price up front. So that ends up being the deciding factor and he ends up going with the other company. So a few weeks go by and he ends up calling back in and he is livid. Apparently the install is underway and it is going south in a big way. And he let us know that the contractor that he went with started a few days ago and they came in and ripped out all three systems. And so far they've installed two of the three systems. However, neither one of those systems are working. And the third system hasn't come in yet and they don't know when they're gonna get it. So he's been completely out of air conditioning for the last few days in the Texas heat when it's 105 degrees outside and 80 degrees at night, making it where the house isn't even usable. So clearly he's going to be frustrated. He just spent a lot of money on three variable speed communicating systems. He can't live in his own home and it's been made clear that the company that he went with is in over their heads. So he was calling in asking for help. But unfortunately, there wasn't much we can do because he was under contract with the other company. I'm not sure how everything worked out for him. But what's shocking is, is stories like this are actually fairly common. So you might be asking, how does something like this happen so often in the HVAC industry? First, you need to understand a little context about how this industry works. So the HVAC industry is largely considered a needs-based industry. So what that means is the majority of folks replace their AC system whenever they start having trouble with it. Whether that's a leaking EVAP coil, a compressor that shells, it's not cooling well, or whatever the case is, uh, they typically wait until there's some sort of issue going on with it. And that makes complete sense because why replace an AC system if it's still doing its job? So then comes the question, when do HVAC systems start to fail? Here in Texas, we have long hot summers, so our AC systems get used all the time. However, we have mild winters, so our heaters don't get used as much. What this leads to is all the cooling components wear out first. So whenever it starts getting hot outside, that's when things start to break. And the hotter that it gets, the more systems fail. So the majority of changeouts occur during a six to seven month period in between April and September. And as a reminder, we're located in Texas, so if you're out north, it's probably going to be the exact opposite. So not only is the HVAC industry needs-based, but it's also seasonal as well. What this means is HVAC contractors have to make the bulk of their revenue during that time frame. So basically, during this time frame, the entire HVAC industry turns into a giant feeding frenzy. So what happens is, as many contractors are trying to get a quick sell, get it installed, and move on to the next as fast as possible because they know time is running out. So the focus becomes volume over quality. And this is largely where the HVAC industry gets a black eye because many contractors will resort to high pressure cells and gimmicks in order to get a quick sell. When it comes to variable speed systems, we know it all comes down to quality and not quantity. So it's easy to see if a contractor is using this business model for all their HVAC system changeouts, when it comes to variable speed systems, this could end disastrous. The next thing to understand is the size of the company does matter. When looking at the types of systems that get sold in the HVAC industry, you have about 70% that is made up of single stage equipment. 
So that is also including homeowners, multifamily, and property management, and so on. Then you have roughly 20% of HVAC sales being two-stage equipment, which is largely purchased by homeowners. Then lastly, we have the variable speed system, which makes up roughly 10% of HVAC purchases. These percentages will vary quite a bit depending on the region that you're in. However, regardless, you're always going to end up with a similar tree. A lot of single stage equipment, some two stage equipment, and little variable speed equipment. So what happens when a smaller company does a variable speed system, a lot of times it ends up being a one off for them. So for many smaller companies, it doesn't make sense to put in an expensive support structure in order to take care of the customer. For example, when we started Atlas AC, we only installed single stage equipment until we got big enough to be able to handle more complicated systems. And this strategy made the most sense for us because the bulk of purchases were single stage systems and it allowed us to stay as lean as possible as we grew the company. From there, once we grew our company to 15 to 20 employees, we were able to incorporate two stage equipment into our offerings. We had to create a more thorough estimating process along with getting an install manager that knew these systems inside and out then promote our best install teams and get them trained up to handle two-stage equipment. Essentially, build out an arm of the company that was geared for two-stage equipment installs. And then from there, we were off to the races. Once we grew our company to around 40 employees, we then had the ability and the resources to start taking on variable speed systems. So we essentially had to do the same thing that we did with the two-stage arm. However, it had to be way more in-depth. So pretty much everybody that's involved in this process from the folks that create the solutions, to the install management team, to the QC oversight, to the install teams, to the service technicians who are going to follow up and service the equipment, all had to be promoted, they all had to be trained, and they all had to get certified. From there, we had to create strong relationships with the manufacturer, which is Carrier, and our distributor, which is Carrier Enterprises to get integrated into their training and tech support. This allows us to stay at the cutting edge, along with being able to go upstream if we end up running into any roadblocks and technical difficulties. So an easy way to look at it is, when it comes to single stage systems, the technicians and management team don't have to be as skilled, the solutions don't have to be as in depth, and since these systems are far more simpler, there's a lot more forgiveness in them. When it comes to two-stage systems, the technicians and management team need to be better trained. The solutions need to be a lot more thorough. And that's just simply due to a two-stage system being more complicated than a single-stage system because it's just designed to do a lot more. When it comes to variable speed systems, now you have to have the best and most trained technicians and management teams, along with being able to put together a more sophisticated solution for the homeowner. You have to have strong factory ties so your team is supported at all levels, including tech support, certifications, and other training. And the reason for this, if you're going to handle the best equipment on the market, you have to be able to have the best of everything else. And this simply ends up being difficult for a smaller company to pull off. So going back to the story earlier, some of those problems could have occurred due to the contractor running solely a volume-based company instead of having a dedicated arm for these types of projects. There could have been a slick salesman that knew how to sell variable speed systems. However, when it came time to get the work done, they assigned it to some crews that may or may not knew what they were doing, which kind of makes sense because they tore out all three systems before they had all the equipment available. It also could have been a smaller company who had a weak to no support structure for variable speed systems, so whenever they started running into issues, they had nowhere to go. Some distributors are even putting volume requirements in place in order to qualify to even purchase variable speed systems. And they're doing this because if they don't purchase more than $100,000, $200,000 of equipment from them a year, that means they're either A, not familiar enough with the brand, or B, too small to be able to support the sale. So now let's look at a couple things that might help you avoid something like this happening to you. And this can be a little tricky because most contractors like to play things close to the vest. So the question that we're trying to answer is, is the company geared up for variable speed systems or is it going to be a one-off for them? Or is it a volume-based company that's not that concerned about the right solution with skilled workmanship? So to get a sense of the company, the first question you can ask is, how many employees do you have? And if I said, we got 60 employees, then you know that this company probably has a decent amount of resources. Then you can ask, do single stage systems make up the bulk of your system change outs? Then I would say, yes, that makes up the majority of our sales. 
You could then ask, about how many variable speed systems do you sell in a year? And my answer would be, more than 100. This at least tells you that we run enough volume with variable speed systems to be able to afford and implement a support structure. Does that mean that's what we've done? No, but there's a couple ways to get to that answer too. Now if we ask the same question to a different company, like how many employees do you have? And they say we got roughly 10 employees. Okay, so do single stage systems make up the bulk of your changeouts? Matter of fact, they do. Based on that answer, you're going to know right away that a variable speed system is most likely gonna be a one-off for them. However, if they answer the question differently, saying that we mostly focused on higher end systems like variable speed, and we actually do very little single stage systems. And you say, okay, that's really good to know. Can you now give me a rough estimate on about how many variable speed systems you install in a year? And if they answer back, we install approximately 100 variable speed systems every single year. Even though it's a smaller company, they clearly found a niche in their market where they can focus their business around variable speed systems. So they're most likely going to have the resources and training needed in order to take on variable speed systems. Then after that, you can ask, what do you guys do for your training on variable speed systems? If they say, I've been in this industry for a really long time and I've seen it all, so I have tons of experience. That is not a very good answer. You see, when it comes to variable speed systems, you have to be very proactive in your training because the technology is always advancing very quickly. However, if they answer that their management team, install teams, technicians, all have to do annual continual training provided by the manufacturer or distributor, along with getting certifications before they can even touch the equipment, that's gonna tell you a lot about that company. And another thing that you can look at is are they a factory authorized dealer? So I'm the most familiar with Carrier, so I'm gonna be using them largely as the example here. So a Carrier FAD is going to be a lot more aligned with the factory and the distributor. So the way that I look at it is, the carrier fads are supposed to operate a lot more like the extension of carrier directly to the homeowner. They have a lot more factory resources at their disposal. They have training requirements. Along with, if they start doing shoddy work, carrier is going to unlist them. So being a fad, you have a lot higher standards that you have to follow in order to represent carrier in that light. That doesn't necessarily mean that they install very many infinity systems, but it does show that they have a strong commitment to carrier. I'm about to make another video about the technologies and performance of a carrier infinity system, along with some of the things that we look at when we're creating the right solution for a homeowner. So if you found this video to be helpful, you might want to be on the lookout for that one next. We also have free buyer's guides and price lists on our website that you might be interested in checking out if you're looking to get your system replaced. Until next time, have a good one.